Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures. Today we're towing with this 2023 Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro. All right, as you can see, we've got the Jeep car loaded up. Total weight here is about 7,800 pounds. Tongue weight is currently reading high. It's just how it stopped, but we're about 800. It's reading at about 950 on there. It's hard to see, but get close up so you can see it. Anyway, 950 to 1,000 is what it's reading, but it's just how I stopped. It wasn't like that before, about 800 when I loaded it. And it's done really, really well. So the only thing is right now, the Sequoia's got 43, 4,400 miles on it, and I can smell the brakes. I haven't been doing that much downhill. So most of the braking was done with engine braking and the trailer brakes. So I don't know why I can definitely smell the front brakes right now. Might just be braking in. Maybe they were riding a little bit, getting a little bit hot. A um, few things on this. Uh, the receiver. Check out my video on the LX600 because this is the same receiver. So I know it's hard to see with the lighting here. I'll go down the other side. But on the LX, you don't have as much clearance around here. Clearance, not clearance. Enough clearance around here to put these longer pins in. This one, you can come almost all the way back here and push that plastic in and slide the pin through. And then on this side, so this pin's extra long. And I actually measured the width here and it's wider than the four to three inch receiver is so you need a really long pin to get in here and on the sequoia it's doable on the lx 600 it's not so much it's a really hard you have to have the perfect pin to get in there but really this is not a bad setup as far as the rest of it goes and it looks like a really beefy strong layout so there is that as well this should be a durable hitch long lasting and the chains chain hookups are good they're a little bit small but the bend there adds a little bit of strength to it and it's really reinforced front and back almost because it's so close anyway pretty strong train mount chain mounts it looks like to me it's sagging a lot this much weight you should be using a weight distribution hitch i like to test without a weight distribution because i have access to the equalizers and equalizer has such high-end sway control pretty much one of the best on the market it's the best hitch on the market but sway control is up there you know almost near the top as well um anyway so i wouldn't get as much of a feel for how the vehicle can control the load if i used a weight distribution hitch um yeah overall so far this thing's been great um I guess we should roll some footage of it towing and I can talk about that of you know from the other camera there up on the Jeep. And anyway, towing it's done really really well. It's quite stable. I don't know. I thought so uh, anyway, it's got a rear anti sway bar and a front anti sway bar. I thought with the TRD Pro suspension, the Fox shocks and all that that it would be really soft and that towing wouldn't be very well controlled but it actually does really really well so that sway bar anti sway bar up front is really beefy um the rear end is really well i don't want to lay down in the salt let's see if we can get a shot of the shock here though anyway it does really well at controlling the load i haven't felt any sway this load is fairly high as far as the weight goes so you know, center of gravity of the Jeep's gonna be up here somewhere. And the engine transmission stuff's all up here, so you're gonna have the center of gravity be pretty high overall on this trailer, and it's just been handling like a champ. No problems at all. You can see we have Jeep car back there on the trailer. We're in at just under 8,000 pounds, and a couple things to show you here are these gauges. So you get oil pressure, battery voltage, fuel, and coolant temp here. You have oil temp gauge, 
trans temp. This is how much uh, energy the electric motor is putting out. So down below it, you have the, the battery. It shows how much is left. And then that whatever there, when I get on it, you can see it's putting out more power, whatever. And then the uh, boost pressure right there. So this thing actually has a really good gauge set up for towing. And the mirrors are awesome. Like those mirrors are just amazing. Um, I have this one pointed down a little bit so I can see the straps better. But anyway, those mirrors are just huge and give you a ton of area to see behind you. I, I love them. These are probably the best tow mirrors I've ever had on an SUV. Uh, we're climbing pretty steep grades here. This is probably a 7-8% grade. Speed limits aren't super high, so this isn't the hardest test, but uh, and it's also like 28 degrees. Uh, it says 39. I don't think it's quite that warm, but anyway, it's pretty cold out, so the engine transmission, all that stuff's not really going to get hot, but this Sequoia, I mean, I've barely maybe gone half throttle to do this. It's so much torque down low. This thing is pretty amazing, but it also does drink fuel when it's towing. It's just like the Ford EcoBoost. Those things are quite fuel efficient empty. As soon as you start towing, you get on it, they are less fuel efficient than the V8. I guess they're putting out more power, so you got to weigh that as well. But anyway, you're you're burning a lot more fuel in the these twin turbo V6s when you're towing under heavy loads and all that kind of stuff versus using the V8s. Right now, I don't know, going up this hill, I'm like three or four miles per gallon, whatever. So I'm not going to have a good fuel mileage estimate on this. I'm not doing a full hundred mile fuel test like I often do but I did want to get a towing fill in and like I said we're at 8,000 pounds and we're just using a scale ball mount I'll show you that if you haven't already seen it anyway um, and this thing really should be using weight distribution when you're over 500 pound tongue weight and we are right at 800 pound tongue weight maybe a hair over that but uh, trailer weight's probably 7,800 so I'm honestly very impressed with how this tows. I would say it's probably the best towing SUV. The Expedition might be rated higher. The Grand Wagoneer and Wagoneer I haven't tested, so those ones I don't know about, but I think the solid rear axle on this is helping. This is the TRD Pro, so it's got softer suspension and it's still just handling this no problem at all. And of course the torque from the electric motor and the twin turbos down low. Ah, there we go, getting on it a little bit. This part's a little bit steeper, but and you can see it's still not even adding that much electric to it. Uh, as far as the horsepower and torque goes, it wasn't adding that much. But another interesting thing with this, when I was in Denver at a Toyota event for the new Tundra, they said, that they designed this hybrid system for maximum performance, much better performance. The secondary benefit is better fuel mileage, but that wasn't the goal. That's according to the guy that I talked to. Who knows if that's true or not, but in my experience driving this thing, the battery always stays pretty highly charged. Like it's 80, 90%, usually 80%, I would say. It's always at 80%. Other hybrids, your battery is pretty much 10 to 15, 20% most of the time. Uh, this is not a plug-in, it's just a regular hybrid, whatever. Um, and really surprised. Uh, sorry, reading this sign, no trucks with three axles or more. We have more than three total, but we're not gonna go down this hill, so we'll be okay. Anyway, um, I completely lost my train of thought. Oh, the battery. Okay, so the battery on this thing. When you're driving around, especially empty, I gotta show you the valley. Super smoggy out there today. I was hoping to get a decent shot of this with the valley in the background, but it's super smoggy. Anyway, um, when most vehicles you're driving around, sorry, this thing when you're driving around, 
it pretty much tries to keep that battery fully charged at the 80%. So these are nickel metal hydride, I think, batteries. They are, they are not lithium ion. I think they're nickel, some sort of nickel based battery. Uh, anyway, and they really do perform optimally, have the longest life at 80% battery. And as you use more on the nickel metal hydride, they're not as efficient as lithium ion. So as the battery goes dead, it kind of is like your car battery. You're at 12 volts and 11 volts. It kind of dies off, it tapers off. And the nickel batteries are that way. Lithium, you get almost full voltage, full amperage, whatever, until it dies. So these are a little bit different and maybe that's why it keeps the battery higher charged, but it seems like it does it for performance. So it's always ready. If you're towing, you hit a steep hill, it's there and ready to add in the extra electric boost as needed. It's not gonna be completely depleted. Maybe if you're running a uh, 80 miles an hour up at seven, eight, nine percent grade, doing the Eisenhower tunnel, I don't know, maybe check out TFL and see how they did. But um, running this thing, even when I was running it hard, it's giving you know half the electric motor's capability. So it does a good job, I think, and it really is dialed for performance. Usually I chalk up their sayings to marketing stuff, like, oh yeah, it's all about performance and fuel mileage is secondary. Normally I would just say that's a um, marketing gimmick, but I will, this with this thing, it's really not. It's a, seems like it's built around performing more. We are almost above the inversion right here. You can see the line there. So we started at like 4,600 feet and went up to about 65, I wanna say. I'll put the number up on the screen. Now we're gonna head back down and I lost the exterior footage on the way up. So hopefully it's gonna work on the way down. GoPros and their finicky stuff. So. It does have great braking. It's holding a little over 3,000 RPM right now. When I push on the brake, it'll downshift. And let's see if I push even more, if it'll downshift more. Uh, it's just slowing down. It does have the trailer brake controller right here to the right of the steering wheel. Easy to get to. It's ideally you're not filming why you do it. You see me throw the camera that's because I'm grabbing the trailer brakes but it works really well I haven't had any problems with it so far I used it manually and it's just the automatic system whatever the automatic part's been working great you can see this road's quite windy hopefully that's not flashing too bad the refresh rate of the screen and the camera frame rate coinciding there but Anyway, we'll run down this hill. We'll let it do some grade braking, see how it does. And so far, I've been really impressed with it. It's actually charged the battery up the highest I've seen it. I think there's one bar left there. So it's gonna run out of regenerative braking here in just a second because it will be maxed out on the battery. take a second to talk about these towing mirrors so they are massive these things are so freaking huge and it's awesome and then the sequoia is already a very wide vehicle it's hard to see with that trailer but it's already a wide vehicle it's probably wide enough that you actually need the clearance lamps these may not be just for looks they actually say trd inside of there anyway um it's might be over the 80 inches wide or close to it at least i'll post that up on the screen but then you can extend the mirrors out even further so if you're towing a wide load you know a full-size camper trailer whatever you'll probably need to extend it but maybe not because it's so wide to begin with and then again these things are massive that's got to be eight inches tall and they give you an excellent view all the way down the side of the trailer huge huge mirrors i love that that on this thing one thing i don't like so much is this roof rack and it's not that i don't like it it's totally fine except i can hear it so at 80 miles an hour i can hear 
probably wind hitting this front guard or something i can hear something and that does bother me a little bit 70 75 miles an hour is when you can really start to hear it all right gauge is here i'm gonna shift well before i do that i want to show you this uh, put it in reverse so this has the trailer backup that keeps you straight so you point the trailer direction you want it to go and it will keep the trailer going that direction so if you're turned the vehicle and trailer are turned at an angle you hit that button it'll follow where the trailer was left and if you want to back up straight you just have the vehicles in a line and it doesn't work very well so if you want to see how that works check out my video on the tundra i'll probably throw the link up anyway if yeah i've never really had good luck with any of these systems and i don't know that it's good luck i just don't like using them the ford one hey you get a little dial that you can turn to turn the trailer whatever i mean just use the steering wheel they just haven't been that beneficial to me and honestly they're a little bit detrimental so for those of you that drive newer vehicles with the parking sensors when those get iced over you expect the sensor to work or dirty or whatever it may be some reason the sensor doesn't work and suddenly you realize that you've forgotten how to drive you don't know how close your vehicle is to the wall or whatever it may be because that sensor is not working i feel like that's come a long way it helps in many situations but it's detrimental in that it's teaching us to rely on all these electronic aids that we don't need uh, let me get off my soapbox and I want to show you here I'm gonna get on the throttle a little bit and watch this jump up so we went almost full force on the electric motor there um, I'm in tow haul mode just want to make sure of that anyway it's only from a dead stop that I really get the full uh, electric assist and even when I was at a dead stop doing like a quick 0 to 60 or whatever it still didn't even max out on the max bar there and I don't know I'm assuming that's just like a percentage or whatever once it's full that's the hundred percent of the motor can put out and I've never seen it go all the way up I haven't done a zero to 60 with the trailer on and maybe that's what I need to do is find a steep hill go uphill floor it but I'm not gonna do that uh, just for safety reasons and whatever that's really hard on the vehicle and drivetrain and everything else I'm um, going down the hill I am riding the brakes now there we go I get into downshift um, I wonder if I were to set the cruise control if it would control that even better and let's try it So, set the cruise control. Uh, it's got to be doing regenerative braking and uh, engine braking. I don't think it applies the service brakes, but it's definitely slowing down pretty good. So, using the cruise control, it does definitely control your downhill speed a lot better than just you know pushing the brake as you go down the hill. If you push the brake, yeah, it'll downshift for you, but using the cruise control, it seems to do a lot more. One other weird thing, when you turn on tow haul mode, RCTA turns off. I believe that is the airbags, the side curtain airbags for when the vehicle rolls. I don't know if it's those sensors pick up on that. You know, you're towing and the trailer starts to sway a little bit and it causes those airbags to go off. Anyway, whatever Toyota's testing has done, they figured out that they need to turn those off, which is kind of cool. I mean, it means they've done their homework, they know what they're doing. Um, but it was a little bit of a surprise for me. So let's see if we can find out how well we've done since we hooked up the trailer. Oh, it doesn't show. So it just shows since we've started the vehicle. Um, anyway, fuel mileage has been maybe slightly better than I originally expected. I I still feel like running the twin turbo is a little bit harder towing a decent amount of weight. You're burning a lot more fuel than if you were doing the same in a V8. So. Thank you for watching Engine Adventures towing review of this 2023 Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro. This thing is a monster. It tows really quite well. The best SUV I've ever towed with as far as these half ton SUVs go, the old excursion and three quarter ton Suburbans would maybe a little bit more stable than this. I'm sure they were.
it's been a while since I've towed with one of those. Anyway, um, the excursion for sure. But as far as the current SUVs available on the market, I would rank this up at the very top. It only has, well, only has a 9,000 pound towing capacity, which is pretty meaty. We're a little bit under eight right now, which gives me a good feel. That extra thousand pounds would make a difference, but I could tell that this thing would totally handle it, no problem, especially with a weight distribution hitch, and you would have no issues at all. As far as everything else, you'll have to check out the other videos for the on-road and off-road and interior reviews, all that kind of stuff. Be sure to uh, hit subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications, and give me a thumbs up, and then comment down below or a thumbs down i guess if you didn't like it but be sure to comment down below let me know what you liked what you didn't like both about the vehicle and the video if you want to see more stuff like this if you want to see me do different tests whatever be sure to comment and let me know thanks again have a great day